What's up guys, I'm Celis Williams, aka The Swole Faster, here to catch you on health, fitness, social being And today guys, I'm going to be explaining to you why and how I'm benching five times a week. Ever since I brought this up on my Instagram story that I'm, you know, doing that on this most recent blog that I started last week, I've got a lot of questions from, you know, basic things such as, oh man, isn't that like a lot to recover from, to, you know, more in-depth questions on, hey man, this is where my bench is at, this is where my strength level is, do you think I can incorporate, you know, benching five times a week on this split, how do I go about doing that? So I want to make this video, one, because you guys might like to explain why behind everything that I do when it comes to like, you know, programming or things that maybe you guys aren't used to seeing, and two, like, from once I explain my setup to you guys, I think you guys have a better understanding of exactly how I'm going about doing this. I think a lot of people think I'm just going in here benching like high volume every single day, or that I'm benching um, like extremely heavy every single day, which simply isn't the case. So, because that that is the case right now, that I'm pretty much I am benching every single training session because I'm benching five times a week and I train five times a week with my current program. So I kind of just want to dive right into there. So let's start with the fact of why am I doing this? So. In simple terms, guys, it's because I have an advanced bench press. Now, when I say that, I don't just mean advanced from the standpoint of like, you know, how long I've been bench pressing or how much weight is on the bar, because all that's kind of relevant, right? Like, like what determines an advanced bench press? Like a 300 plus bench, 400 plus bench, 500 plus bench, that's all gonna kind of vary based upon, you know, leverages, weight class, etc. But what I mean by an advanced bench press is, yes, for my weight class, my bench is good. My bench is over double my body weight. I compete as a 74 kg lifter, so it's how my weight class is 163 pounds, and that's not not me like you know I walk around 170 I cut to 163 I actually walk around 163 pounds my best bench is 347 pounds um, in competition so I really do like you know I, I bench double my body weight so from that standpoint yes it's it's advanced in terms of like just from a, a weight class perspective but also in terms of just like what my genetic potential probably is on the bench after you know training for some amount of years and kind of being able to see what that is um based upon my leverage as far as like you know how long my arms are relative to my torso not benching with the you know extreme arch or even being able to arch as hard as what a lot of people do because the reality is for like the you know handful of people who do have a stronger bench than me in my weight class those are like you know the elite guys like the genetic elite in terms of like whether it's you know how much their, their ability to arch or um how short the leverages are just you know different um genetic facets of, of the point being like I, those are bench, levels of bench presses that i would probably never get to that's not to be an excuse not to be like oh well, they're really strong with me because of this it's just a simple reality that you guys have been watching the channel know that long enough that you know your potential on any given lift is set the day you're born based upon your genetics and how much of that potential you fulfill is based upon things like you know your training controlling the different variables that are in your control and um you know things of that nature but the reality is guys that i have a very strong bench press um for the level that i'm at and it takes a lot of work to add anything to my bench at this point like like i think i hit 341 um actually back in like 2016 and i only hit 347 last year so basically and granted you know there's different ups and downs in terms of like you know the way i was going about my training and my program but the point is even with very on point training i think the next time i compete in june i would be happy if i go from benching 347 to like you know 353 or maybe like um even like you know 358 like adding 10 pounds to my bench with all this given time of the off season would be huge for me that would be great because of how strong i am in terms of the bench press obviously like my deadlift and squat there's a lot more potential for me to like you know build those lifts up a lot faster not just because you know obviously you can add more weight to the squat and deadlift relatively faster but because i simply am not as advanced in those lifts as what i am with the bench press so the basic premise behind why i'm doing that why i'm benching like every training session is because the idea is the more total weekly volume I can get, the greater magnitude of adaptation that I will get from um, you know, my training, which you guys already know. That's what anyone across the board, right? Like the more total volume you can get in on a lift or on a muscle group, like the, the more strength you're gonna probably yield on that movement or the more muscle you're gonna be able to build on the muscles that are involved. So in the case of the bench press, since I am benching five times a week, that's simply more total weekly volume than what I was doing before and I was only benching three times a week or four times a week. And on top of that, because I'm benching every single training session, that's just higher frequency in general. So aside from just the total weekly volume going up by default, I'm gonna become more proficient on the movement because I'm doing it more often throughout the week. And that's just simply about specificity, right? I'm specifically working on the bench more often throughout the week, so I'm gonna get better at it. And that's with any skill um, that you practice on a regular basis, right? And we see the same things with people who, you know, 
from like squat every day, which you know, those of you who've been with the channel, like from the very start, you, you guys were kind of here when I was still doing like the squat every day thing and like the benefits I got from that. And that's something else I'll be addressing too, is like, you know, is this something I would recommend for different movements or who all would I recommend doing this type of training for? Because mine, I'm not benching every single day, just every training session, so five times a week. But that's pretty much like, you know, the, the premise of why, I'm, so I can get more total, um, weekly volume in on the movement because one bench just takes so much volume to improve upon anyway like it's really hard to actually fatigue the bench the way that you do with squats and deadlifts and you guys know that fatigue and fitness go hand in hand when we raise your fitness we got to raise that fatigue we have to like you know push um the threshold of what we can handle so that our body can adapt to that can recover from that adapt to that and then push it further and that's just really hard to do with the bench so benching more frequently helps with that as well as the fact that i'm able to actually practice the movement more often so that's the basic mindset behind like why I'm doing this right now in terms of the way I'm going about it you guys know that before I had um, my SPD intensity day and that's where I had my heavier bench day and that was on Saturdays and I still have that still the same premise I work up to like you know a heavier top set usually anywhere from like you know one to three reps and then I have my um, back down work which will be like you know two back down sets based upon um, like uh, percentage of my top set and then I'll have like you know three to four back down sets based upon the percentage of my one rep max so that's still exactly the same and then you guys knew that on Sunday I would come in and that would be kind of like just like a little secondary additional like bench volume day where I just work up to maybe like a top set a uh, build up set of nine and then that's it so I just build up to a top set of nine at whatever the RP is and that's it there's no back down work it's just a way to get some additional bench volume in and that's still the same in terms of what my um sunday workouts look like and i rest on mondays like the way i always do now on tuesday same thing you guys know that's my spd volume day which is what i'll be getting in today so um you know i'll work i'll work up to a top set on bench press but it'll be like you know in the higher rep range usually any you know usually anywhere from like five to seven just depending on like what the block's looking like um in this case you know it's going to start at five and it's actually going to end at three just because we're trying to push like heavier workload but the point is you know i'll work up to a top set and then i'll have three back down sets that are usually you know 90 percent of whatever my top set ended up being um for my SVD volume day then on wednesdays you guys may remember that on my last block wednesdays were kind of just like uh uh, a back accessory style day just kind of get some additional direct pull work in since I you know don't get any of that on my SVD volume day and I get some on my Sunday workout which is to kind of like you know cover what's not gotten on my SVD intensity day so the Wednesday workouts kind of just goes hand in hand with SVD volume day but now what we're doing is we've thrown in another build up bench day on that day so on this day I build up to a top set of eight at whatever the specific RP that's assigned for that day and then that's it there's no back down sets it's just hey build up to the top set of eight and then um, that's it for the bench press and then I go to my usual um, back and arm accessory work for the Wednesday workout so it's a very similar setup to um, what I'm doing on the Sunday workouts for building for building up to the top set of nine it's just another way to get in some additional volume it's higher reps at like you know relatively low RPE so it's letting me get in that additional volume let me get in that frequency but it's not over fatiguing me because I'm not just doing like you know sets upon sets upon sets other than the build-ups to get to whatever that is but since it's like you know build up sets of nine or eight at like an RP six or seven I usually end up only getting to about like you know 200 you know like maybe like 215 220 pounds anyway like starting off so I'll, I literally can do like you know 155 for my first warm-up or my first build-up set and then go right to that with little no issue so it's not even the build-up sets isn't just like you know a crud load of volume on those days and then what we're doing is on Thursdays you guys knew before that I had like you know my heavier uh, tempo singles on bench. Now we just now I just work up to like now I'm doing normal singles on bench. So I work up to a top set of one at whatever the prescribed RPE is, and then I'll have um, more of that traditional tertiary style um, back down work after that. So like you know I have two back down sets of seven at 60% of my one rep max, kind of what I used to have on tertiary days, which is about you know three sets of you know a certain rep range at a very low percentage of my max to kind of finish the week off with fatigues the highest the only difference is this time i work up to a top set of one and then i'll have my back down work of that's more like the church area style work after that so that's what all five bench days look like and if you guys kind of notice the setup i you know it's pretty much the way it always is I've, I've got my my three normal bench days i've got my SPD um intensity day so i've got my intensity bench day i've got my more volume based bench day on my SPD volume day 
And then the last training day of the week on Thursday is like that church area day, which is, you know, we specify that based upon whatever we need it to be, whether it's more technique, focus work, additional volume, um, working with, you know, heavier weights, which is what we're doing right now. And the only thing that's really changed is I have those two extra days of bench press where I'm just building up to a higher um, rep set at a specific RPE. Once again, it's just letting me get in that little bit of additional volume that I'm still able to easily recover from and letting me just get a little bit more proficient at the movement. And the mindset behind this is, yeah, we're getting more total weekly volume, yeah, we're getting higher frequency, but from having like two heavier days of bench press, it's going to allow me to stay more acclimated and used to working with um, heavier loads because that's, you guys know, if you've kept up the channel, that's kind of always my my struggle, right? Like we'll go into the off season, we'll be doing a lot of work with volume, stuff like that. But then when it's time to transition to heavier weight, that transition is pretty smooth and easy when it comes to the squats and the deadlifts, but it's a lot harder for me on the bench press. Like it's like when I get to a certain amount of weight, like, you know, 310 plus, even though I may have just done like, you know, 300 the week before, no issues, it just gets to the point where just, man, this just feels really, really heavy in my hands. And that's simply due to the fact that I'm somebody where I respond really well to intensity. We already know that everybody responds well to volume, how much volume is gonna depend on you as an individual, but intensity is something that's, I think honestly, from my experience with my clients and then, you know, from various experience with his own clients, even more individual. Like some people can only handle so much intensity at, at any given point, even when they're closer to a meet, or it's really gonna wreck their wreck them fatigue wise. For me, I respond well to intensity. I adapt better from constantly kind of working like with heavier loads on all three lifts across the board, but especially with the bench press because it allows me to stay comfortable with keeping um, heavy weight in my hands. So that's why we have that speed intensity day. And then we have on the church area day, I build it to a top heavy single at a specific RP. And then I'll have like, you know, my back down volume work after that. So the mindset is kind of a combination of, okay, we're getting in a lot of total weekly volume, we're getting in that good frequency as well, but we're also working with heavy enough loads pretty much all year round. So that way I can keep building off of that and never feel thrown off when it's time to transition to like, you know, full meat prep mode where we're working with heavier loads more consistently. I'll already be used to it. So that kind of like, you know, maybe first block of prep where I have to really kind of just get used to transitioning. I can have to worry about transitioning, I'm already used to it. So I can really start to push RPEs to be like, you know, true, you know, RP seven, eights, whatever it may be um, at the lower rep ranges with heavier weights. And so far guys, it's been working really well. It's been feeling great. Last block, you guys know like a couple blocks ago, it's when I first had to do like, you know, benching four times a week, it felt kind of weird because I wasn't used to it. But then by the second block of the off season, I was feeling good and feeling um, really used to it. Well, this time around, with going to five days, it hasn't made me feel like, oh, I got to get used to this again. It was almost like kind of an easy transition because we just kept building. It's pretty much almost just like, you know, adding in that additional volume. Because like I said, the only thing that really changed was adding in bench on Wednesday. So I was already benching four times a week. And it's just, I'm already experiencing the difference. Like this past SPD intensity day felt really, really good simply because it's like bench felt so natural. It felt so easy just to set up and get in position. Cause at that point I already been benching, like I'd already benched like, you know, four times previously that week. So it just felt really easy and intuitive to get in the position that I wanted to. And um, so far I, I think we're getting good results from it. Obviously it's gonna be something that we have to play with for a long period of time to see how it goes. But the fact that we already know going four days a week was beneficial for me. I, we, it's pretty much pretty, you know, we're pretty certain that the five day a week is going to be beneficial for me as well. It's all about doing what you can recover from. So now kind of answering a few of the common questions I got, let's start off with that. Like, like well, how are you able to recover from that adequately? So the first thing I understand guys, like once again, the bench just doesn't really fatigue that much. If people can set up, you know, programming to where they can squat every day, then benching, you know, four or five times a week just really isn't going to fatigue you um, that much. Now, I think the reason a lot of people are asking me is because what, what you often see, and somebody even like said this in my Instagram DMs, which often sees people who are benching like, you know, five, six times a week or people that have like extremely huge arches or like um, shorter, shorter arms, shorter leverages. And the reason it makes sense for them to do that is because they can get away with benching more often because it's simply not as fatiguing for them because what, it's not as long a range of motion. It's not as much work. In my case, you guys see, I don't have an extremely huge arch. My arms aren't short relative to my torso. But the thing is, I, regardless of that, I just kind of have always had like a natural proficiency for bench. You guys know that like pound for pound, it's easily like my best lift. And I like part of that may have to do like, you know, with, with muscle fiber distribution, like, like, you know, there's no way of knowing exactly why it is that that's the case that despite my leverage, I'm good with that. But 
I'm just very proficient at the bench. Now on top of that, because I'm on top of like my movement prep and my uh, my mobility work, as well as just adequate accessory volume on like, you know, my, my back movements, my pulls and my rear delt work, keep my shoulder girders healthy. I've never had like shoulder issues or elbow issues or anything like that with the bench press. So pushing more volume and frequency on it simply isn't an issue for me in terms of recovery, not just neurologically, but it's not an issue for my muscles to recover from, nor is it an issue for my connective tissues to recover from. So. Thus far, it's been fine, and once again, we'll kind of see how that goes as we go from there. But in terms of recovery, it's 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 simple as that, guys. It's all about pushing as much workload as what you can adequately recover from and adapt to. I'm not saying that you should be pushing it like just to the brink to where you can barely recover from it. Um, but you know, if you're able to get a little bit more workload in to recover from, that's only going to benefit you because more workload, more gains. And you guys pretty much should understand that concept by now if you've been with this channel long enough. Now, another common question that I've gotten about this is, well, rather than doing like the five days a week, why don't, why don't I try something like, you know, just um, extending my grip out further? So you guys know right now I'm currently just um, uh, pinky finger on the ring. Why don't I try to extend my grip or try to push my arch more? But those of you with the channel long enough understand that I've done that. I spent months trying um, various like, you know, grips. And the reality is anything beyond ring finger on the ring, simply I'm weaker on. Like, even though it's a short range of motion, I lose so much driving force and, and honestly, even though I feel a little bit more stable, I just lose so much driving force to where I'm just not stronger with it. And I'm not talking about like, oh, I tried to change for a week or two and didn't feel comfortable. I'm talking, I stuck with, you know, trying wider grips for months at a time. And Brent and I have just found that anything beyond ring finger just doesn't feel good for me. But pinky finger on the ring actually feels better than ring finger on the ring. So a wider grip simply isn't for everybody. And I explained that in past videos as to why that why that's the case in terms of like you know why don't you try to push your arch more you guys have to understand my focus is on proper retraction pressure of my scapula and kind of letting my arch you know form in whatever natural way that it does but the thing is even if i tried to push my arch more you guys have to understand i'm not going to be able to arch as much as some, what some of these other power lifts are able to because that is genetic you know there's things you can maybe do to kind of help your you know your flexibility like a little bit of your mobility in terms of getting in position on the bench how much you can arch ultimately is determined by your genetics. That's that's it, based upon like your anatomical structure. So I wouldn't be able to push that much more anyway, even if I were to, because the thing is, Brandon, I've had times where we push my arch more and I'm not stronger in that position. So there's just so much that people have kind of come to the conclusions on about bench that they think about the bench from powerlifting that we just found is not true across the board for every individual. There's a lot of different builds in this game. You're going to discover that there's a lot of different ways to go about your setup on like, you know, the squad, the deadlift, and yes, the bench press as well. So that's the reason why, you know, the, the, the basic premise of, okay, well, let's do what we do know works, adding more volume, getting you to work with heavier um, weights more often. We know that stuff works for me. So that's the route that we're going rather than trying to force stuff that we've already tested and know isn't very beneficial for me. And then um, something else I want to point out is that a lot of people may be thinking like, okay, well, um, so-and-so has a stronger bench than you, but you only bench three times a week or four times a week. So what makes you think that you need to bench five times a week if your bench is weaker? Once again, guys, this is all relative. Like in terms of like your strength is relative based upon your genetic potential. When I when you when you say you're advanced on a lift, it's relative based upon what your potential on that lift is. Like a, a perfect example is my boy Michael Shea, you guys have seen on this channel before. He's also a 74 kg lifter. Um and he benches more than me. He benches in the 400s and he's only benching um, four times a week. He's not at five times a week yet. But keep in mind, he has shorter arms relative to his frame compared to me and he has a much bigger arch than what I do. So he's able to still see progression on the bench press. And that's the thing guys, it's not about me doing this because I want to, I'm doing this because I'm trying to do everything I can to make sure that I'm adequately progressing on the bench. And that's kind of the mindset I want to leave you guys with is, just because somebody is doing something and getting results from it doesn't mean that you should do it and that you'll necessarily get results from it. And just because somebody who may be stronger than you isn't doing something doesn't mean that you shouldn't try implementing it for yourself. That's a big thing that comes with, you know, learning about individual programming and then working with um, a competent coach who has experience and knows how to kind of determine what you should or shouldn't try. And then, you know, learning things on your own. That's the thing. Like a lot of stuff that Brendan's able to do with my programming is because he's able to ask me what things that I've done in the past and ask me things that I've tried and like, you know, things that I've experimented with. And we kind of can look back at different, at like, you know, years of my training and see, man, this seemed to work really well or this didn't work as well. And even like my current bench setup is kind of like a combination of how I kind of used to set up on the bench. Um, before I tried a wider grip and then kind of combination of the stability of something that I did try with the wider grip. So things like that. But it's like if I were just to make the mindset of, oh, well, you know, Michael's the same weight class as me and, and he's benching more than me. He's only benching four times a week. So there's no reason I should have to go to five times a week. If I were to do that, then I wouldn't be able to experience the benefits of what I'm experiencing right now so far, which is already just feeling 
better at the movement, more comfortable, more natural with it. So that's pretty much, you know, why I'm benching five times a week and that's how I'm going about doing it. I'm not benching like, you know, I'm not maxing out or hitting like RP eights and nines every single session. I'm not doing like just crazy high volume every single session. It's still goes along with those rules of doing as much workload as what I can recover from. It's just trying to get a little bit more workload in, focus on that frequency, and then really trying to push intensity on the days that I tend to feel better with like the weight loading process. And that's pretty much how it works, guys, and that's what I'm doing, and that's why. As for like, should you guys be doing this? The, the answer for the vast majority of you is going to be no. The vast majority of you are probably like, you know, beginners or intermediates, or you just haven't gotten your bench to a point where like, you know, you can just barely add in anything to it where like, you know, it takes you like a whole year just to add like five pounds to your bench. A lot of you probably aren't even at that point. Like I said, I'm benching over double my body weight and I'm sure most of you watching are not quite doing that. It's not saying that to be cocky or arrogant, it's just being objective with knowing where you're at and why you don't need to push to certain extremes um, until you get to a certain point. And as for, hey, is this something that you can do with other movements? Once again, it depends on what you're doing and how you have it set up. Uh, like with squat every day, that's something that I've done. That's something that Brendan's done. That's something that a lot of people have done where they've gotten a lot of benefits from. When I first did, I think I gained about like 50 pounds on my uh, my squat like in a couple months just from doing that. But once again, it all depends on like how that works with your programming, how you can set it up. If you have a coach, kind of what he has planned for you because it was a lot easier for me to do squat every day at that time because one, I, I was just weaker. So it wasn't like I was putting as heavy loads on my back day in, day out. And I just wasn't doing as much workload as a whole across all my movements, period. So like right now, squatting every day is not something that I would try for myself because like I feel like I would get diminished returns from it. I would just wear myself out trying that. Whereas with, you know, benching just, you know, five times a week, nowhere near as fatigue, nowhere near as strenuous, so I'm able to get away with that. Um, as far as trying on other movements, once again, it kind of depends on what we're talking about. Like people can do push-ups every day, they want better push-ups because it's, once again, it's a calisthenic movement or same thing with pull-ups, a calisthenic movement because it's just not as um, fatigue, you're not gonna beat your body up as much. Now, if you try to do like weighted pull-ups every day, that's different, that's gonna tear you up, that's gonna beat you up, that's gonna tire your nervous system, beat up your connective tissues, um, etc. But in terms of the bench, guys, it's just something that you are kind of able to get away with more free, uh, more total volume and frequency on. And that's in general, guys. Like if you're somebody where you're squatting twice a week and deadlifting once a week, you, probably still can, you can get away with benching three times a week. Or if you're squatting three times a week, you can still probably bench four times a week. And that's kind of the order that it goes in, right? Like deadlift, we notice because of how taxing the movement is, is the movement's gonna get the least amount of volume on it. Even if you pull sumo, you can get away with a little bit more volume, but you, your deadlift is almost never going to have as much total volume as what your squat is, and your squat is never going to have as much total weekly volume as what the bench can handle. So it be due to the nature of how fatiguing the movements are. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I want to cover with this video. Hope it was informative. I know it's kind of long. I probably got a little bit repetitive. I just really like to like drill these things into you. But yeah, that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can get better. Like the video, share. Subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.